Um, How long did you stay locked up? I was locked up for a little bit over two years. Two years. But I was waiting for trial, and, and I was about to beat trial, but I was facing 25 to life on the other end, so they gave me a plea agreement the day before trial. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. By way of New York, comedian oh, Rob is in the building, man. Stop playing. What's going on, brother? What's happening? I'm man, listen, know. man, I got me. Hey, listen, hey, listen, all the, all you Puerto Ricans, all you Hispanic, don't try to hate on Boss Talk. We cross over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We crossed over. You got to. I, I, and I, I'm going to be honest. I was a little, you know, I've seen, you know, I follow Boss Talk. and Really? I was like, yeah, y'all ain't messing with us Puerto Ricans. Y'all treating oh, like Mexicans. Damn. Damn. You must not see him. What's his name? Man, we had a bunch. No, no, no. Um, Who, which one? Go ahead. He, see, look, look, look. No, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. I'm no, trying to no, remember no. his name. He wasn't that important. Yeah, the, 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 the Mr. 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 George. Mr. George. That's why George Lopez posted us, too. Oh, Mr. George. 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 But he's Mexican. No, but Mr. No, Mr. Mr. George is the guy that be like, uh, Mr. George, Mr. George, this guy here, you're, he works. He's a comedian, though. Okay. Uh, the computers and stuff. Like Let me get him to do the Mr. George one more time. Let's go. Do Mr. George one Mr. George? Man. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. All right. Yeah, hello, Mr. George? Yes. I hear in the radio, Mr. George. Yes. No, no drinking. No, I'm, I'm done drinking. No. No, no smoking too? No, no smoking. I, I'm be good tomorrow, Mr. George. See you tomorrow in the morning, all right? Yes. Yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was good stuff right there, man. But he ain't like... He's, he's, not, he's not a comedian. He's, he's not, not, he's not, oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. But he's hey, not, I'm going to know what he's saying. He, he, he from the internet age. He ain't even... But you might be on. the first Puerto Rican. Is he the first? The only, well, you know, so right now yeah, I'm the we only. Never had a, we never we, had. We one. never had. We have a. Shout out to you, baby. We hear him. Yeah. You make it sound like I'm a pilgrim. You know, like I just crossed the Mayflower. That's how the first slave felt when he got it. I'm the first nigga in, in, in well, how did you? How did you? Man, I'm, we got so much to talk about. I love your New York accent. We got though. so what much to talk about. Where are you from? I grew up in the Bronx. The in the Bronx. Bronx. Yeah, but then South I grew up in the Bronx. I was like, I was like the first Prince of Bel Air. We moved to the suburbs. <laughs> so I can't even front. Because if anybody see, they were like, he wasn't in the Bronx. He was in Long Island, in the suburbs. How old were you? Okay, how long did you stay in the Bronx for? I was in the Bronx till I was about 11. So how, from out, because you were so born eleven, in, and then I was I was born in Manhattan. Born in, oh, you were born in Manhattan. Yeah. Okay. So I was born in Manhattan. It was in the Bronx, so about eleven, and then my parents moved out. They bought their first house. Okay. You know, one of those things of you know moving the family out of the projects type of thing, and then we moved to uh, we moved to Long Island, which is a suburbs okay. of New York. So how was the change for you as a kid from the Bronx to Long Island suburbs for you? You know, but when I was even in the Bronx, you know, my parents had put me in a Catholic school. Oh, okay. You know, you in Catholic school? For right up to when we moved. But prior to that, Frazon Love, who I, I, I go on God. the road with, he uh, he lived right around the corner from me in the Bronx. Really? Oh, wow. we, and you know, I mean, like, we had same and friends. And you knew him and everything? No, we didn't know each other. Really? And we might have, but, you know, we was young. young you know, you're talking yeah. about six, seven years old. So when I said uh, earlier, Roxanne Shantae, the hip-hop era, uh, uh, Eric B and Rakim, MC Shan, stop playing. Stop Africa Bombada. Stop Africa Bombada, man. So my, my family was, my, my, I had a cousin that was down with, at that time, it was, Underground, underground, underground. So rap was was not out. So you're talking about Spoonie G, yeah, yeah, Kumo D. Or, so I used to get these under, all these underground tapes, and Bismarck wasn't even out. He wasn't even talking out. about the '70s. Oh, this is oh, oh yeah, because you know 70s. rap did start. Funky Fresh, rap yeah. did start in New York in Let's the '70s it. and started in the Bronx. In the Bronx. So when I moved to Long Island, and I used to get these underground tapes, nobody was. You know, and the first commercial uh, album that came out was uh, Sugar Hill Gang. Rappers I met like them dudes. 50, 50, well, they did my wife's, uh, uh, my wife's 50th birthday party. Wow. But they, um, so learning that, but then, you know, my parents were both in law enforcement. And so I grew up kind of privileged. So yeah. I can't say I had And you grew up with call. both parents I, in the household. But I still had, yeah, and I, I still had relatives. And how relatives. you ended up in doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing then? Yeah, there was a time. What happened was when you privileged, <laughs> that's where you learned that you want to take shortcuts in life. You yeah, know? So yeah. I, was, I was real privileged. I was in college. I got married young. How old were you? 
I got married at 18. And it's the same wife you have right now? No, no. Oh, okay. How long were you staying married for? We, we, We ended up married. I got married too young. So we figure probably about six years. Up to about when I was six, seven years, until I was, you know, until I went to jail. Yeah. At least that wasn't a year. At least that wasn't a year, because some people be only married for just a year. Yeah, you know, I grew up up in a a, a household mother, father. So I believe in that. I started dating her. She had stepdaughters, and and I felt like, you know, I wasn't going to sleep in someone's bed with their kids around and not be a father type. That's right. real. So, That's a real man. So that was that was how I grew with that. But, you know, I, I, I took those shortcuts. You know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't looking to, I, I should have stayed in college, you know, I had football scholarships. I was, uh, I went to St. John's, but it was one of those things when I always had that mischievous thing about me, you know, I'm spontaneous. Some Get people it done, say the street it. was calling. The street were calling, they shouldn't have been calling. You know, so <laughs> my ear was still to the street. A little bit, so I got involved with some involved with the mob. You know, New York, you can get involved with a yeah, lot of things. Yeah. So, what did your dad say? Because you said he was law enforcement. He what was, did he? My see? dad was a cop. He was actually the first police officer in his in his uh, in his agency in New York City. So, what did he say? So when what you did he got say locked you? up? When you got when uh, he, he was in a bad he was position. Upset, wasn't he? Yeah, but you know what? My dad kept it real. You know, he you know he never asked me if I did. it. He never I was did. Just, see, I was just about to ask you, did he know about what you were doing before no, you I was got out, I was out the house. I was but out the house raising a family at that I'm, time. How many get out of jail cards free did you get from him being because your father? Because he was a... Well, you know, maybe tickets, but, you know, I, I actually... It put me in a good position in jail. Yeah. Because even though I was also protected by the mob, which, mm-hmm. you know, um, he... Him being who he was, so when you're in jail... You know, you get a level of respect from either like, you know, a good fellas type thing, right? And then you get respect because they know your father's law enforcement. But that was, it hurt me in the beginning because they put me in protective custody. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But they did that mainly because there were people snitching against me. They wanted to seem like I was snitching. So mm-hmm. once we once we neutralized that, there was a way we did that. Um, How long did you stay locked up? I was locked up for a little bit over two years. Two years. But I was waiting for trial, and, and I was about to beat trial, but I was facing 25 to life on the other end. So they gave me a plea agreement the day before trial. Wow. Uh, because we, we had one, I had a big, mm. big, big time power house attorney back then, and um, it was one of those things that I want to come home. And all my father told me, like I said, he never asked me, did you do it? What he said was, if you feel like you're guilty, you, you know, then you take your deal. If you feel like you're not guilty and you can do the time, then you plead not guilty. And that's how we made the decision to take the cop out because I knew I wasn't not guilty. You know? Yeah, yeah. At that time, I was involved with, that's when the crack game got started oh, heavy. Oh, So I was involved with some people at, and at that in the 80s, it was uh, uh, on the car robberies going on back so then. So that was a yeah. charge was... Yeah, we, car oh, yeah, more over almost a million dollars in robberies on um, the cars. Wow, man, mm-hmm. and, and and you think about it, man. Though, like I said, did you ever? I mean, did y'all get away with anything? Or oh, we got away with. Oh, we never got got caught. That's what I'm saying. Fact. So you already had. That was a behind the scenes guy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He had an already. He had a man. Sometimes we can bump you? our head. So the robberies. I was at that time. I was twenty. And I was, I was 22. 22, okay. Bump your head, bump your head, and then finally you have to do a stint. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.